Hey, I'm Stella, and I'm on the phone with Molly from Always. How are you doing, Molly? I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing good. So your sound has been described as indie pop. It's been called surf rock. Time magazine called you guys sunny guitar pop. How do you describe your own sound? Uh, I think, well, we just go by pop, and then all the words come before that when, <laughs> when people write things. But I was wondering why we were being referred to as fuzz pop. Fuzz pop? Mostly every article, but um, <clears throat> then I realized that it's in our bios. Like, I had no idea. I just noticed that yesterday. I don't even know what Fuzz Pop is. <laughs> You're making history right now with Fuzz Pop. It's stuck in there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> uh, so what would you say uh, are big influences to your sound? Um, I was uh, enamored with Celine Dion for a large portion of my childhood, so I'm sure that's a huge influence, though I don't really consciously think about it. Um. And then we all sort of come from, the boys come from, um, they were big fans of the Halifax 90s lone thrush hermit scene um, out east. And so now we just all sort of listen to exactly what you'd think we would listen to, I guess. Which is what? Um, just, you know, uh, new releases and then classic, uh, you know, the Smiths, the Replacements, uh, Brian Eno... You know, just things you would expect that we would probably gravitate towards if you heard the record, I guess. Right, totally. So you are a member of the Rankin family. So what was that like growing up in a family band? Well, uh, I'm not necessarily a member. I I would be the second generation, I guess. Okay. After the band, so I was more of a uh, a tag along child, spawn thing. <laughs> um, but I did. I toured around with them when I was, I think, 18 or 19 for a couple of months. Um, but yeah, very normal childhood. We lived in the woods. It was uh, really not much different from anyone else. I think that a lot of people had fathers who were making a lot more money <laughs> <laughs> with their respective trades than you know what what we were dealing with. But more of a spotlight. Uh, okay. So is being surrounded by all that music something that really influenced you and, and shaped you as a musician, or did you kind of come to it in your own terms? I would say the latter. Um, but I do have some residual Celtic things that sort of uh, bleed out here and there, I think. Probably a lot of, you know, the fiddle tendencies on guitar and, and maybe some of my weird mountain accent. <laughs> Oh, that's great. So the lyrics to your songs can be quite mature and serious. Sometimes they're a little dark, but the sound is always quite bright and melodically happy. Is that something you've decided deliberately to do, or is that something that just happens? No, that's, I think, just something uh, that comes out, and uh, it wasn't a conscious thing. So I'm happy, I think. Maybe it, it's a, it's good to balance that out. Had we made a really bleak, <clears throat> I mean, some of it is quite bleak, but uh, an entirely bleak record, also, uh, lyrically, I think maybe that would be too much. Mm. Awesome. So it's the new album. So how did you come up with the cover for it? It's a really wonderful cover. Thanks. Uh, I have nothing to do with it, really. I just found it in an old magazine um, <laughs> and uh, in, in a really old, like, 70s National Geographic or something. But um, we just sort of, like, sought the rights to use it, and, and it was striking sort of from the beginning. It was the only thing that really struck me as, something that would be suitable for the cover so yeah that's fantastic and the music video for archie marry me it's like very retro is that done on super eight yeah that seems to be what we gravitate towards just <clears throat> randomly filming things while you're passing through places or i think that i like a little bit of grain we don't look really good uh in, in super high def you know so <laughs> trying to buff out all of our imperfections <laughs> so you're going on tour with real estate are you excited for that how's that going to be I think pretty good. We're discussing how we're going to get everything we own into a <laughs> on another continent right now. This morning. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm excited to see them. We, we're big fans. So. Yeah, have you met the band? Are they good people to hang out with? Uh, I've only really met one of them, and he was uh, super lovely. So I can't imagine they're really abrasive jerks. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really come off that way. <laughs> Uh, so I read that you started this band with a longtime childhood friend of yours. Is that so? I think that uh, Carrie actually came later. Um, it, it sort of it's always 
started with Alec and I, and Brian uh, eventually sort of joined joined the group, and uh, and then Phil and Carrie came a little bit later in the game. But Carrie and I have been hanging out since we were tiny. Um, <clears throat> So it's nice to have her around. Absolutely. So I've lived with one of my really good friends, and it definitely changed our relationship. Do you think going on tour mm-hmm. with uh, your really good friends will change anything, change the dynamic? Uh, I don't think so. I think that we've really stood the test of time. Like high school is a huge litmus test. Uh, <laughs> we seem to ke- come out of that situation on good terms, and uh, there was really no, never much friction ever. <laughs> it's just very easy with her. But, uh, yeah, I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> Good. Okay. So for people who aren't familiar with your band, how would you describe every member in it with one word? Oh, God, that's a hard question. <laughs> Just off the top of my head. Um, maybe we could refer everyone to being a type of food. Ooh, that's well, a good one. Paul would be cheese. Brian would probably be bologna. <laughs> Carrie, <clears throat> probably the mustard. <laughs> Uh, Alec would be the bread, and I would be um, a napkin. There you go. Very important. Mm. I like the mustard. It really ties it all together. <laughs> you be the mustard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these days, most bands in the indie scene are fronted by men normally, or the women are solo acts like Cat Power and Jenny Lewis. What's it like to be in a band where there's two female fronts, really? Another thing that I don't ever really think about, but I, we do get a fair amount of like, how is it being a woman? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't, I think that the people, the men that we were surrounded by, we're, we're just all sort of the same. Um, but uh, I don't know. We're very tomboyish. I don't really think that I have ever thought about it like that. It's fun. We get, We have our own little like, we have a dash of chocolate usually when we travel. That's pretty much the only gender stereotype I could (laughs) refer to as far as we go. Perfect. All right, so my last question. So is Archie a real person, or is he based on a real person, maybe? The song uh, doesn't refer to a particular Archie I know. I Actually, Carrie and I have a mutual friend, cousin, um, whose name is Archie, so we sort of joke that it's about him, but yeah, it's just a a name I slapped on there because it sounded nice when I said it. (laughs) It does. It does sound very nice. Well, thank you so much for calling in and talking to us. Thank you for answering. (laughs) Great. (laughs) All right. Well, good luck. Thanks so much again. All right. Bye. Bye.